Tough. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> Good morning. Today is 29 March, the year 2011. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in Palm Springs, California. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in our country's military conflicts, especially World War II. Today, I'm here at the Mission Hill Senior Living Center. And today we have the honor and the privilege of interviewing Captain Arnie Stewart. Captain Stewart was a B-17 bombardier in Europe during World War II, so we're going to talk to him about that and a lot of other things. So good to have you here, Arnie. Good to be here. I'm uh, alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a lot to be said for that. Okay. Okay, Arnie, first of all, uh, could you uh, uh, spell your full name for us, please? First name, A-R-N-O-L-D. Last name, Stewart, S-T-U-A-R-T. And when and where were you born? I was born March 10th, 1924, in the city of New York. Making you how many years young? 87. Oh, 87, looks like you're doing great. Um, a little bit closer. Okay, and what was your father's name? Lewis. And what did he do? He's a salesman and a politician. Both. Oh, really? <laughs> How so? Well, he was very active in, in the uh, politics in New York. And then, from what I understand, I was a kid. At one time, he might have been in the assembly there. I don't know. Oh, uh -huh. I really don't know when. Yeah. And what kind of sales work was he in? I just general sales to uh, to the public. Uh -huh. He had a private clientele yeah. specializing in railroad workers. Oh, and uh, how did he end up in New York City? Where did his ancestors all come from? His mother and father were both born in this country, from what I from what I can recall. Yeah, and that's how it. Went. Yeah, <laughs> and their parents must have come in by boat somewhere. Probably, yeah. Their yeah. ancestry, if you want to know that. Was yeah were Scots German, oh, oh. basically German. Mm -hmm. And your mother, what was her name and her maiden name? Anne, Anne Stein. Okay. And uh, what did her father do? I haven't got the slightest <laughs> idea. Or do you know how your mom and dad met? Where they, how, how they got to... know nothing about how they met, how they married, or anything. Mm -hmm. And do you know about her ancestors, where they may have come from? Yes. Uh, from what they had, I learned over the years, the original, I think my mother was fourth generation or fifth generation, I'm not sure. They started out in Russia, then Italy, oh. and then here. Okay. Um, and um, her ethnic background, uh, they're, they're, were they? Uh, they were Jewish. Okay. All right. Even though they came from Russia to Italy. Right. But they probably left Russia because of the pogroms uh, and all, ago, all yeah. that sort of stuff going on. They spent yeah. a couple of generations in Italy. Uh, yeah. oh, and then, then they came here. And they came, okay. And was your father, his family Jewish also? Yeah. Okay. Um, and did you have any brothers and sisters? I had one sister. And she passed away about at least 10 years ago. And what was her name? Barbara. And was she older? Or, or? She was five years younger. And uh, do you, where did you live in New York City? What, you remember the street you lived on? Or? We lived in the, up in the Bronx, upper middle class Bronx. Let's put it that way, because there's a lot of areas there. Uh huh. And do you remember the street or, or? Bronx Park East? I do remember that. Uh, Don't know the number. Was that a house or a an apartment, apartment house? Uh huh. Yeah. And I think half of the half of the residents were my relatives. <laughs> <laughs> we should make life very easy. <laughs> And was your fa uh, family very religious? Did you go no, to the temple? No, not stuff? religious at all. Okay. And uh, uh, now you grew up during the Depression. Uh, how, how was that for your family? I really don't know because I just lived living my own life. Yeah, just everybody in the same boat. I got out of school very early. I skipped a lot of grades. 
I graduated high school at 15. Wow. Well, let's back up just a little bit. Uh, what did you kids do for fun? Pardon? What did you kids do for fun? You, 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 you oh, yeah, we lived right across from the park. We played in the park. Okay. Baseball, football, just ran around. Typical kid stuff. Now, was that Central Park you're talking about? No, Bronx Park. Oh, Bronx Park. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay, I was in front of the apartment. I was across the street. You're in the park. <laughs> and uh, did you get to go to, did, did you have any favorite sports or favorite teams that you followed? I was a giant fan. <laughs> Baseball and football. Did you go to the polo grounds? My dad knew some of the boys there, and I sat on the bench a couple of times. Really? Oh, boy. Any favorite players? Melot. Mm -hmm. okay. Harry Danning. Okay. <laughs> Leslie. Lieber. Bartell. <laughs> I forgot a few. Uh, oh, Travis Jackson, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, so I guess you saw a lot of giant Dodger games. Yes. <laughs> it got to the point that living in LA, when the Dodgers moved to LA, oh, I still rooted for the Giants. <laughs> I still do. Yeah. <laughs> the black and orange, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you went to some of the uh, giant football games then too? Yeah. Do you remember any of their players that you liked? Oh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, Ken Strong, yeah. Mel Hine, no, he was a center. Tuffy right? Lehmans. Tuffy, yeah. I remember the visiting guys like Clark Hinkle and Dutch Clark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. Eddie Janowski. Those things I remember. Yeah, <laughs> those are good memories. Uh, did you did your father have a car? Do you remember the first car that you? My father's first car was that stupid looking Chrysler Airflow. About what your uh, model was? Early, about 35, 36 yeah. in that era. Yeah. Is, is that the first car you ever drove? Do you remember driving? I don't know. I didn't get my driver's license for many years later. I see, yeah. That's yeah. a story by itself. <laughs> well, tell me about that. We'll, we'll get to that, okay? Okay. I, le I, I left home early. Oh, okay. Went to work. All right, well, let's. Uh, so, where did you go to grade school, grammar school? PS 105, mm -hmm. New York. And then I went to Angelo Patry Junior High, which is across from Fordham University. Mm. And then I went <coughs> to Vander Childs High School. And from there I went to Syracuse University. And from there I went back to NYU. Oh, boy. So you were a pretty good student then, I would. I was a lousy student, but I was, I was smart enough to slide through. <laughs> I happened to have a photographic memory mm -hmm. that if the teacher said something, I was on. On the test, I'd look at it. Oh, he was wearing a brown suit, that stupid gray tie that they he lectured on. This, and this is what he said. Wow. <laughs> That's how I got through. Have any fav uh, favorite teachers in school? No. Or, or favorite classes? Or did, what did you like? Uh, is there nothing. Nothing. Just did you? Um, were you interested in aviation when you were a kid? No, I was more interested in show business. My mother started taking me to Broadway plays when I was very young. And when I left home at an early age, I went to work. In, in, show in the business. Oh, really? Okay. Well, so you were like 15 when you graduated, you said, from high school. Yeah. What year was that, would that have been then? Oh, I, I don't really don't remember. It was around 39, 80, Yeah, 80, right. Okay. That era. And so then, so what did you do when you graduated? I went, I went in high school, uh, the last few months I was working. Went to circus. Well, okay, let me, let's back up a little bit. Yeah. Did you have odd jobs and stuff when you were? I had one big, one job in burlesque, oh. and then I went to stand up by myself. Really? Well, tell me how you got that job in burlesque to begin with. I was a bottom banana. What does that mean? That's the one I got the pie in the face, <laughs> the water down the pants, <laughs> the bottom of the list. But how did you, how did you even get that? I mean, how did you just... Through a friend's father. Okay. I got it. Yeah. And with a work permit, naturally. Yeah. And so what, why, why were you so interested in that? It just fascinated me. And so the, when your mom would take you, where did you go down to Broadway plays? Or yeah, Broadway plays. plays. Uh-huh. And they had burlesque, too. Oh, but where, burlesque did, where, where, where were the burlesque theaters? In, in, in Manhattan. No, they were all over. 
And it, well, strippers were really nothing in those days. Yeah. It was skits, skits and sketches, and you didn't, but the men didn't say anything, but they wanted to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave it to the imagination. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So okay. So you got that job, and uh, and so who who were some of the people that you worked with? Uh, Tempest Storm was one. Gypsy was one. Yeah, Gypsy Rosalie. Is that right? And I forgot the others. Yeah. A long time. <laughs> well, that must have been pretty exciting then. Yeah. For a kid, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I got involved in a few other things which we will not discuss. Okay. So, but then, um, so you did that for a little while. Then you did you, you then you went to Syracuse University. Syracuse. When, did, when did you start in, at Syracuse? Uh, 1940, I think, 40 or 41. Mm -hmm. But did you have a major? I had a scholarship in forestry, which I lost promptly because it didn't keep my grades up. I was too busy with fraternities and sports. Uh -huh. Okay? What, what fraternity were you in? Which is a three shall I tell you? <laughs> well, tell me. Yeah, I was oh. thrown out of. <laughs> you what? I was thrown out of oh, two or three of them. <laughs> no, no one's going to touch me with a paddle. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, were they Jewish fraternities that you were in? One was and one wasn't. But they, but they allowed you, even if it wasn't? I mean, I because know of what I was Because of athletics. Oh, okay. So, if, you know, for, if you know colleges and fraternities, hey, you're playing on a football team, you want a soccer team, yeah. come join us. And what, did you, what uh, sport did you play? Football. Oh, you did? And boxing. And lacrosse, and after that, my father said, "Get you lost your scholarship. Get back to New York, back to NYU." Okay. I went back to NYU. Uh, yeah. There, I majored in education. In economics actually was a major. Mm -hmm. My pa parents wanted me to be a teacher, so I went along with it. I had no interest in it. I was having too much fun with the other stuff. <laughs> um, what position did you play in football? In the single wing, I was a quarterback, the blocking back. Mm -hmm. I was short and fat, and you couldn't knock me over. <laughs> Did you play in high school also? No. No, just no. I drifted through school. I'm trying to. Yeah. Well, do you remember what you were doing December 7th, 1941? Yeah. I was the Polo Grounds. Oh, oh, I think, oh, yeah. Uh, because you, when you hear a lot of. Uh, it's usually they break into, it was usually the Giants and I think they were, were they playing the Dodgers? I think they were playing Philadelphia that day. Philadelphia, yeah. They broke, broke into it and, and made the announcement. Did you hear it? Did they, did they do it over the PA system? Oh, yes. Yeah. Had, what did you think about that? Had it, I really didn't know anything about it. Okay. I hadn't been that interested in anything. Okay, yeah. I'm being very honest about this. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, it started to sink in that we were at war. And they were going to draft me. And I said to myself, I don't see myself crawling through mud and slime. No way am I going to do that. So I got my parents' permission to ride into the Army Air Force, fly for the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And I guess in those days there weren't too many college students available, so they accepted me. Mm -hmm. And where did you go for your boot training? Oh, my first place. We went through orientation. It was Atlantic City on the boardwalk. Oh. <laughs> and I slept on the floor of the lobby of a hotel. That's how crowded we were there. I marched up and down that damn boardwalk. From there, they sent me to Oswego State Teachers College, upstate New York, right on Lake Erie. That's when I threw my first Piper Cup and fell in love. You. Went for a ride in it? Or? No, it was it was a class prepare you, review. You drop your pencil, you miss you miss calculus. <laughs> you know, one of those refresher courses. Uh -huh. And from there, they put us on a train, and it was a train to Tennessee. There, they assigned me the assignments, and from Tennessee, we went to Alabama. Mississippi, Alabama, of course, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, wound up in California. At Santa Ana, please. Mm -hmm. Miserable trip. <laughs> Along the way, oh, these, these guys, 
He needs some uh, navigators at this base. We're trapping these 50 guys off here. That's what they, that's what they were doing. Oh, that's how I got chosen for what I did. A long time to get there. <laughs> and Santa Ana wasn't bad. Now, at Santa Ana, uh, were you uh, a bombardier then? Or, or no, I was you, just training. You were just training. It, it was a like, cadet uh, program? Yeah. To be a pilot? Yeah. And he switched me to bombardier and sent me to Deming, New Mexico. Got my training there. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Deming, in Mexico, somewhere in Arizona for gunnery. Mm -hmm. Kingman, and, uh, Kingman, I think. In Dyersburg, Tennessee, to pick up my crew. Mm -hmm. And I had, we had an experience there. Tell me about that. Night bombing. Bomb stuck. I got up, went to the bomb bay, the doors were open. I forgot to lock myself in. It was a safety problem. I'm sitting there, throwing a 100 pound bomb, and my chief engineer. It's right opposite me on the other side of an open bomb bay, 10,000 feet, lifting this one stuck bomb out. We also got accused of killing a few cows, always on that base. Farmers would come next and say, you owe me, your boys killed so many cows last night. <laughs> from Dyersburg, that was it. Went to Kearney, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Picked up a ship there. Didn't get it all the way to England. Had to land in New England somewhere and took a boat. A nice Swedish luxury liner. Yeah. The Kungsholm. Uh, See, these things I remember. Oh, yeah. Did you get seasick at all? Seasick at all on the ship? Just, yeah. I spent two days on a transfer. They wanted us a few people to transfer. And like a young, stupid kid, I, I volunteered. And I wound up on a destroyer. <laughs> That's when I got sick. Yeah. Up and down and left and right, and up and down and left and right. And in England, uh, I forgot what it is, it's in our first base, which was Polebrook in the Midlands East, near Peterborough, which was the brick capital of England. And that's where I spent the career. Okay. And you were in... Okay, let me put all those bases down. Okay, yeah, I, I want to I wanna do that. Um, well, not, no, not all of those. I just, when, you, when you got to England, where you were most of the time, you were in 8th Air Force. Do you remember the bomb squad or bomb squad? I forgot the numbers. Okay. But it was, it was Paul Brook and Peterborough. We were Triangle J. Okay. That much I remember. Yeah, I can look that up. Hmm? I can look up the Triangle J. And that'll, that'll tell me where, where you, what uh, squadron that you ran and stuff, yeah. So, well, I, yeah. All I ever see is Triangle C. They were the boys, I guess, the, the favorites, the old times. Oh, uh, Every movie you watch is always C. It has a C, Triangle C, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, there was, uh, and then they had the, the Square D, I remember it was the 100 yeah, bomb. Really, they're, they're the ones that got shot up really bad, yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, did, tell me about your first mission. It was to Munich. I was stupid, I slept half the way. They said, initial point up ahead, and I started my work. And that's when I looked down and saw that all oh, that aircraft fire and said to the guy, they're trying to kill us. <laughs> and do you remember what uh, what date that was? I don't remember what date now. 44? Oh, it was a 44, yeah. Was it? Oh, yeah. Early 44. Early 44, so. Yeah. And that's pretty, Munich, pretty long way to go, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you have uh, escort? We had fighters. All the way, yeah. Okay. And we also had German fighters. <laughs> a little each. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many missions did you end up flying then? 30. 30. And, uh, I got the air medal with six clusters. That you wanted, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> and... Uh, The, um, tell me about some of your more memorable, well first of all, tell me about your crew. Did you keep, stay the, together the whole, the whole 30 missions pretty much? We had the same crew the whole thing. We, we lost one man, but we stayed basically together. Our navigator was quiet, she never saw him. Even half the pictures they took of us, never saw him. <laughs> Always away from everybody. And the, uh, but we flew together, that was it, no socializing at all. 
but you felt you had a, a good tight crew. I mean, you could. Once we were both ship, it was no, it was different. Right. But once we left that ship, mm -hmm. bye, fellas. Yeah. And uh, did you like your pilot? Yeah, oh, he was a great guy. He let me fly. <laughs> yeah, tell me about that. What, how, what, what would he do? Uh, so, some of the milk runs. Mm -hmm. He said, "Honey, you want to fly?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> he said, oh, "They, they mispicked me." <laughs> so he would get, he would go to the right seat. The co-pilot would get out, and I'd sit in the left seat and fly the goddamn thing. <laughs> he let me fly a couple of bomb runs too. Really? Oh, okay. Tell me about that. Well, I was fine. Once, once you're on the run, you just mm -hmm. sit back like this. Right. And look at the flag. <laughs> and well, there's that bomb site controls everything. Right, yeah. And that's a Norton bomb site? That yeah. you were, tell me a little bit about that. that it was very, supposed to have been very, very secret. I guess it was because our orders were if we ever landed in Germany or had a chance of being captured by Germany, destroyed. Right. And, and you look, what did you look down through? We looked through a, an eyepiece, looked down, yeah. and we had crosshairs. And when the crosshairs met, the trigger. Okay. And normally we were here and the target was here. So, because that's the way the bomb went. Uh, In theory, they told us that the bombs hit if we flew straight and narrow. The bombs hit when we were directly over the target. That was the trajectory. Yeah. And um, um, did anybody get hurt on any of your? We had some of the boys, a couple of boys got bullet wounds. We had a crash landing, which is really nothing, but they classified as a crash landing. And uh, where was that? Or I was over England. Uh -huh. At your base, or oh, we are near, our, very, very close to our base, uh -huh. and uh, <clears throat> we jumped once. Oh, you did. What was that like? Scary. <laughs> Wondering if that... You, it was very scary, I mean... And you never, uh, probably never practiced that before. That was probably yeah, the first time you ever jumped from it. I didn't want to practice it. <laughs> I talked like a soprano because my thing wasn't too <laughs> tight enough. Where, um, um, Reams, near Reams. Oh, you were? Oh, okay. So why did you have to jump? We were on fire. <laughs> That's a good reason. From flak or flak? Flak, yeah. Towards the end, there were very little uh, German fighters. And where was your target that day? Pardon? Your target that day? Your, what, where was your target? Oh, our target that day, I think, was Hamburg. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. We saw our first jet on the way to Berlin. Yeah. Came right through the formation, straight up. And they finally figured out a way to get them. You know, they moved so much faster than the 51. They said, you sort of close in on them from all around them, or well, you're not going to get them. Mm -hmm. And we were very lucky we got the aircraft factories in time, or we would have lost control of the air. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which would have cost us the war. Yeah, could have. Yeah. Yeah. And knocking out their fuel bases too. Uh, I think they didn't. They could only stay up for a short amount of time. Plus, uh, yeah. um, so, um, when so when you when you bailed out, did you made did you make a good? Did everybody land okay? Well, everybody landed fine. Okay, and so but you were behind our by this time. Behind German lines. You were behind German lines even at that time. Well, tell me how how you got out of that underground. The resistance. In fact, they came up to us and said, do you want to kill Germans or do you want to go back to England? We are real fast. <laughs> <coughs> oh, they wanted you to join them. Huh? A couple of the boys did. Yeah. Not me. Oh, yeah. That was it. So they got you to safe houses and stuff? Yeah. How did, just it took us about four days, five days. Mm -hmm. So where did they, did they take you right into Reims then? Or, or where? No, they, we wound up in Paris. It took us into Paris. Oh, okay. You know, we were in Paris five days when, when we liberated it. Well, you were there at the time of the liberation? Were you? Oh, okay. I couldn't show my face, but I was Yeah? Huh. Well, that's pretty interesting. I've interviewed a couple guys that came in with the uh, liberation. One of them 
they had six Americans that were, uh, and six Brits that were with the French, de Gaulle, and yeah. coming in. And uh, so he was one of them, and he, and he talks about it. Yeah. So it was, it was quite a day. Mm -hmm. yeah. My back, I got a two week leave. I've got a lot of experiences you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I guess. Want to hear a funny one? Yeah. You guys going to be on tape? Yeah. I'm in the office's uh, store, the PX, in London. I've got a date. I make my purchase and I tear out of it because I'm late. I don't want to miss this date. I'm a young single kid, you know. And I hit something. The next thing I know, I'm flat on my back. I ran into somebody. So I just started, I got up like this slowly, and my eyes went up slowly, 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 until I saw a pair of ivy pistols. Patton? Yeah. Put your hand down, just say, okay, how, how are you, son? You okay? Are you hurt? This so. And he had some, I think General Spots or somebody was with him. And he looks at General Spots, looks at the insignia. Oh, be careful where you're running around, son. You don't want to get hurt. He said, yes, sir. I got a heavy day. He said, go get your day, go get your day. I got out of there. <laughs> wow, my heels were so solid. Like a clock. <laughs> yeah. Take when it. you were in London, um, do you remember the buzz bombs and all those stuff coming in? I got a story on that one too. I'm in bed with a broad. Bomb hits. I'm thrown across the room. It was that close. She winds up on the floor, just off the bed. I'm across the room. Those things were scary as hell. They weren't scared if you saw them keep going. And you knew you're not going to get hit. But once that engine stopped, watch out, run. Run somewhere. <laughs> did your plane, did you have a name for your plane painted on it? Like yes. What was yours? Virgin on the Verge. <laughs> with a picture of a petty girl with her back to you. That was it. Yeah. And was your was it painted olive drab or was it the silver your your plane? Silver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all over. Back to the States. <coughs> I can give you incidents but coming back. I was on a boat coming back. And we landed in Boston. And I get on the phone to call my folks first, my girlfriend second. My girlfriend's in New York. She's a California LA girl. Oh, okay. And folks invited her to New York. What was her name? I'm, I'm headed for California the next day to see her, and she's in New York. Oh. What do you do? Well, we'll try the Red Cross. And they got, they got a, now this is at night. I went to the Red Cross back and forth. Finally, my mother, they hit my mother on the phone. She's sick. She's almost dying. She's this, she's that. All phony. They changed my paper, so I went by myself to New York. <laughs> <coughs> but I wound up in California anyhow. And uh, what was her name, your girl? My girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Jerry. G-E-R-R-I-E. -R -R -E. What was her last name? Brown. And did you marry her? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, so where did you meet? We met on a blind date in California when I was in Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, it wasn't that David, she just tried to kill me. <laughs> what do you mean? You know LA at all? Well, kind of. I went to see a cousin of mine, and he told me where to meet him, and I met him there, and he, he had nothing to do, but he, he was at a different cousin's place, from his other side of the family, and this girl was there. Where you guys want to go tonight? Eh, let's be stupid. Let's go to the USO, can mm -hmm. canteen. She no. volunteers to drive us. We get in the car, I'm sitting behind her, she's driving. She leaves us out on the corner of Sunset and Doheny, in the middle of traffic. From that day on, I said, the day we met, you tried to kill me. <laughs> so was that the Hollywood canteen? That yeah. You, really? Oh. Do you remember seeing any stars there? Or? Oh, I don't remember. There were so many that I don't remember. Yeah. Huh. I don't remember any of them. And uh, Jerry, what did her uh, father do? Pardon? What did her father do? Jeff? Her father and, her, and his brother-in-law, they owned a chain of jewelry stores. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you know anything about her ancestors, how they ended up in California, where they all came from? They, they, her ancestors, her mother's family, 
and by and her stepfather saying all came from St. Paul, Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. okay. How they wound up there, I haven't got the slightest idea. And were they Jewish also? Yes. Okay. I wasn't interested in family. I'm not a family-oriented guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. So you, you come back to New York, you see her. Now, do you go back to school then? Or, or no. What? I'm, I'm still in service. Okay, you're still in service. Sorry. I have orders to report to Carlsbad, New Mexico. But we want to get married. So we call her mother, make arrangements. We're coming out. How do we get out there? We call her. Her mother calls somebody. My father calls somebody. Because this is when the UN meeting was on, going to take place. Try and get a train ticket. But my father and her, and her mother's friend, they had enough influence. We got a lawyer. Uh -huh. All the way to California. Stayed there a couple of days, got married, and drove from LA to Carlsbad. Had experiences on the road, the car broke down a couple of times. We got there, no place to sleep. We finally had found a place, a storefront. We slept in a storefront, the curtains were on, next to a movie theater for over a week. <laughs> till we got some, so I found a guy right in us a bedroom. A real nice couple. Helped us out, and uh, I reported for duty. And she uh, decided to go to work. She went to work on the base, the housing department. But she didn't last there too long. We went to a party one night, formal party, at the officers' club. And this gentleman walks in in white. This major walks in in white. And she looks at him and in a clear, loud voice, when there's nobody's with you. Look at the fireman, what's he doing here? A week later, she wasn't in housing, she was in finance. <laughs> yeah. Across there was an interesting experience. What were you doing there? <coughs> Working with Chinese, with Chinese students. And they loved orange juice, orange drink. And they loved to gamble, it was plot machines, that was their baby. We lost a couple of them. This, in flight, we decided to did something, fell through, fell out. But they were interesting people. Mm -hmm. Then, at discharge time, I said, I'll stay in if you give me 90 day leave. They said, no, we'll give you 30. I said, 60. They said, no, 30. I said, maybe 45, no, 30. I said, goodbye, and left. I would have stayed in. Yeah. And these Chinese, you were training them to go back to China, to yeah. the Chinese Air Force yeah. or whatever, yeah. Uh -huh. Chang. Chang, yeah. Uh -huh. Chang Chang. <laughs> Went back to LA, moved in with her folks temporarily, enrolled at UCLA. Mm -hmm. And I also worked a little bit with the studios and so on. I went through the whole bit. The studios, the nightclubs, you name it. Vegas, I worked there. By working, you... Stand-up. Stand-up comic? I didn't succeed because A, I didn't have the drive or the ambition. Mm -hmm. And it's luck, drive, ambition. Where'd you get your material? My wife wrote a lot of it. Yeah. I stole a lot of it. <laughs> I did. Why not? We've worked for those guys, why not work for me? Yeah. Just put my own little twist on it. And I was... Who, who did you... Did you pattern your pattern, just, so to speak, after anyone in particular? No, just went along. Almost, almost a Henny Youngman type of thing. Mm -hmm. but a little dirtier. <laughs> and uh, went along for a while, did some traveling. They went to Vegas, my wife laid the law down. Me or your career. She's laid on because I was fooling around. And I picked her. Yeah, this is a smart thing. Yeah. Now did did you ever see any of those mobsters and kind of people? We don't get into that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but safe to say they were involved in the uh, the uh, They the old timers, this I can tell you, were great. Their word was their bond better than anything legal you could sign. 
break your word, and you're in trouble. And that was it. So you go back uh, with your what to L.A. So, I guess, and so okay. then what? Go to school and work. UCLA. Yeah, okay. graduated there. What was what did you, what was your major? I forgot. It. I had I changed it so often. Uh, American Indian. Uh, economics, actually, but I love the American, Western American Indian, uh -huh. like a minor. Oh, yeah. So what did you do after graduation then? Fooled around with, until the kids came along and I started getting steady work. <laughs> quit, quit because my wife made the choice. Yeah. Went to work uh, for her father, managing a chain of stores. Mm -hmm. Didn't like that at all, too confining. So I went, then I went to work for Bulletin Watch Company. Oh. Was with them. Then I worked for the Lucian Picard Watch Company. Then I worked for the Kaliri Lida Company. Then I worked for independent jewelry manufacturers. In what capacity? Sales, sales rep. Oh, uh huh. So did you travel much? Quite a bit. But I was behaving myself then. But in California or? California, Washington, Oregon, mm -hmm. Nevada, Arizona. They wanted me to go to Utah and Colorado. I said, no way. They're not my kind of people. So did you drive? Uh, Drove a lot, flew a lot. Mm -hmm. And I took Hawaii over also. Oh. Did that for years. I see couldn't. you have a Kapalua shirt on there. <laughs> That's a tournament. I volunteered for all the tournaments they had there. Oh. Seniors, ladies, the men's. Yeah. Pro-ams. Did, did you live there in Hawaii? At 20 some years to live in Hawaii. Oh, you did. So I got tired of work of being on the road. I just got tired. I got back from a trip. I said, we went to, so I went to go on vacation. Let's go to Hawaii again. So we went back to Hawaii on vacation. And on the way home, I asked him, would you like to live here? He had looked at some condos. He said, yeah. Got back to LA, 107 days later, we were moved in in Hawaii. 107 days, the house was sold and we were gone. And how old were your children then? In the 50s, it's early. Uh, I think your children, how old were they? Oh, they were old, they were 19, 20, 21. Oh, okay, so they were out of the house pretty Yeah, they got a story about it too. My eldest daughter keeps telling her friends, you know, kids get to be 18, 19, 20, 21, they leave home, leave their parents alone. Not our family, we stayed home, our parents left us. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and so how many children do you have? I have two daughters and two grandsons. Oh, and what are your daughters' names? One is Pamela Jane, and the other is Leslie Karen. And where do they live? One lives in Pleasant Hills, California, which is north of uh, Danville. Mm -hmm. And the other one lives just about on the campus of Santa Barbara University, oh. the California Santa Barbara. And do they each have a, a, a child or? You're, you're uh, the youngest one is my two grandsons. The oldest one couldn't have children. Oh, okay. She's married to a magnificent guy, computer whiz, works for a banking system. Mm -hmm. The other one is a tenured professor at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. I have one grandson who's taking a year off, he just graduated Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. taking a year off to find himself. Do I have to tell you anything? The younger ones at UCLA on a Herb Alpert scholarship. Really? Music scholarship, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you get over to Hawaii, so where did you live? Uh, I lived just on the edge of, I lived in Kihei. We started out in Wailea, and we moved to, bought a, bought a nice little condo in Kihei. A mm hundred -hmm. feet from the ocean. And did you work while you were over there? I spent, not for the first few years. I was a bum. I, had, I did nothing. How do I make money and still do nothing? So I became a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. Hated it. Hated open house. I said, the hell with this. I saw an ad. Went, applied for it, and got it. Wife of uh, Wiley Golf Club. I was with him 15 years. Doing what? Hmm? What were you doing there? Starter and Marshall. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Staff. Staff, all right. Yeah. Still got one of the jackets left. That's got to be fun. Now, did you play golf too? Three, four days a week. <laughs> Had you played much before you went to Hawaii? Once a week. 
Yeah, too. Yeah. Maybe twice sometimes. My wife also. Where did you play in LA? Or? Where we could. Uh -huh. Normally the uh, public courses. Yeah. Her uh, uncle belonged to uh, Hillcrest Country Club mm -hmm. in LA, and we'd go out there once in a while as his guest. Yeah. And play there. <laughs> That's where the boys were. That's where Red Buttons wanted me to travel with him. Oh. Uh -huh. I, yeah, uh, Hillcrest. Uh, that's right. Hillcrest. I asked him why. It's because of that stupid laugh of yours. You remember Welcome Back, Carter? Uh -huh. Horshack? <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I laughed. They had a table there at Hillcrest Country Club called the Comedian's Table. Nobody could sit there. Danny Kay could sit there. Benny, Burns, Marx Brothers, you name it. That was their corner. <laughs> and I was sitting there one night, and Buttons was telling a story, and I started to laugh. And that was it. He offered me a job. I said, no, thank you. So you got to sit at that table, too? No. Oh, well, but they, no. they heard but I you wanted nothing there. to do with them. Yeah. I didn't want to get tempted back into that crap. Yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't have, still didn't have the drive or the ambition. Yeah. Let them enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when did you uh, leave Hawaii, then? My wife passed away about 1979-1980, and I stayed on for a few weeks, a few months, and, and my daughter was living in La Quinta here, and uh, she said, come over. So I came over here, I had a condo over in uh, Woodhaven, yeah. <clears throat> got sick, went to the hospital for surgery, was in the hospital for a year. No, for hospital, when I went to uh, Monterey Palms. Yeah. I was there for a year, learning how to walk again. Oh, wow. What was the matter? What? I, had, uh, I had my colon taken out. Oh. I have no colon. Yeah. So then I came from uh, there, I went to Atria, Hacienda. Mm -hmm. And then my girlfriend moved here from there, so I followed her here. Oh, okay. Here, we're here at... Uh, yeah, Mission Hills. Oh, oh, at Mission Hills. And what's her name? Her name is Florence. Uh -huh. And where is she from? Where did she grow her, up? She, Cleveland originally, then Orlando. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when did she first come to the desert here at Palm Springs? About oh, three, four years ago, that's all. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, I can, I've come to Gaza before. When I got out of service, we lived in L.A. How can you not come to Palm Springs? Oh, okay. We bought a house. We sold the house because we weren't coming down enough before freeways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it would take you how long to get here? In those days? Yeah. So yeah, two, three hours. Yeah. Um, where did you have your house at that time? Just uh, on, in, on the Indian, mm -hmm. behind, way, way out of North, North Park Canyon. Yeah. With the old, I don't know if you know where it is. Old Harsh Heights Twin Palms Hotel. I think. Yeah, on Indian. Oh, okay, it, yeah. It was there. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so before you got sick, did you play much golf out here at Woodhaven? Yeah, played a little bit out at Woodhaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Spent my nights at Casey's. Casey's was. The restaurant bar. Oh, okay. With with singing, piano bar. And they let you sing if you want to. Oh. In those days. <laughs> so you did some singing? Pardon? You did some singing? I had the world's worst voice, but I could put a song over it. Let's put it that way, okay? Okay. <laughs> and uh, did some singing there. Met a nice man there, we became the best of friends. Well, he was next Air Force. Oh, okay. Tail gunner. Yeah. Did you ever keep in contact with any of your shipmates? From the day I left the base to come back to the United States, I haven't seen or heard from anyone, and I don't give a damn with that. If I do or I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's I slipped through the war. <laughs> well. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Well, you, you came home, so that's, right. that's a lot of them. Didn't, did it ever bother you at all? Um, your, when you you drop your bombs, there's gonna they're gonna go off and they're gonna Not hurt in the people. Least. Okay. They told me what well, one time when I was leading our particular group, I think it was our, I don't know I was leading something. 
into Berlin. My mom said a red area shelter. Didn't bother me at all. They ran down it. They, they were the people down. It's a target. Yeah. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they were civilians. I didn't care. And to be perfectly truthful, I think half of our missions toward the end were morale missions. Break the Germans' people morale. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had no military left, basically. No industry. Yeah. Get their morale. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which we did. So, what do you do these days to occupy your time and... Over there? No, here. No, no, now. Here. Now? Yeah. Now I do a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. I love to get out. So my buddy comes by here on Saturday night every so often. We go to a bar. <laughs> Drink. I see people without canes, without walkers, without wheelchairs. <laughs> Noise, live, young. <laughs> it's just good to get out. Yes. This afternoon I'm going to Walmart. Get out. That's good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> that type of thing. Yeah. And do they here? Do they take you places? Uh, the, yeah. The Fridays, my, my girlfriend gets her hair done at the, at the mall at Westfield, yeah. and I go with her, mm -hmm. and we wander around. Sometimes we shop, sometimes we don't. Yeah. We have lunch at the mall. We got a couple places I like. Yeah. What do you, uh, What do you like to read? Read. Mm -hmm. I'm reading a lot of detective. Patterson, Stuart Woods, Robert Parker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of the guys like Ludlam, who don't write anymore. They sign their writing. Gresham, who signs his writing out and just edits it. Oh, really? Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. They're not writing much anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I try to read just about everything, but that's. Mm -hmm. I really, uh, at the Air Museum, I. Uh, I'm kind of in charge of our audiovisual area where we get the DVDs and things like that. And I just recently started getting CDs of the old radio shows, Sam Spade and uh, oh. uh, Philip Marlowe. I, I love listening to those. Yeah. Who knows what lurks? Yeah. You lurks the minds of men. Yeah, the Sam, shadow knows. The shadow knows. <laughs> That's right. I, got, I have have some of the shadow, you know, Lux Radio Theater and a lot of that stuff. So. So I bet you don't have one comedy one. What's that? Where they say to Jack Penny, you met him, you have money of your life. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm thinking! <laughs> I know. I, I've heard that. One of the greatest lines I've ever heard. It is. It, I always cracks me up. Every I've, time. I've got a question. How much longer? I, I've got a medical reason. The bag is Oh, fine. okay. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, oh, one question I would ask, and which I usually do, you veterans, if you had uh, advice for a young person going into harm's way like you did, what would it be? If there's a war on, and you're going, or if you're going to Iraq, or you're going to Afghanistan, all I can tell them is you're dead. Consider yourself dead. And it'll be a hell of a lot easier on you, your nerves, and your family. When you come back alive, it's a And I learned that, believe enough, from 12 o'clock high. The more I thought about it, the truer it was. Yeah. Well. Arnie, thank you for your oh, service you. to our country. Thanks yeah, for coming yeah, in yeah. and sharing with us thank today. You. I, yeah. I, That's fine. Oh, well, we were done. I got a question. Who yeah. do I, I'm having a problem getting, getting out of here. I want that $1,000 thing for veterans or the housing. Um, I'll. Let me make a note. Uh, I'll ask at the Air Museum. There'll be somebody that knows that, that works with the veteran. Yeah, everybody's got to get a thousand, like a twelve hundred a month. Mm -hmm. It's a veteran for my housing and stuff, okay. or whatever they call it. Well, I don't see why I shouldn't get it. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I don't know anything about it, but I mean, I've heard about it, but I don't really know. Isn't it unusual with all that? I never got a good conduct medal. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I told the general often.